how are you? I'm really excited to be here today because I have a fun, new, exciting happening that I wanted to share with you going on with my Facebook group. Um, if this is your first visit to my channel, how are you? My name is Karen Campbell. I'm the founder of Awesome Art School and the author of the How to Draw Fun Fat Faces series as well as my new book, Mixed Media Magic. So, I'm going to dive right in. Today, I'm kicking off um, the... Hashtag 100 Fun Fab Faces Prompt Series Challenge, if you so choose to accept it. What we're gonna do is, um, I am going to every Friday do a full demo slash tutorial here on YouTube, and I'm gonna post it in my, well here, for any of you who wanna follow, but then I'm also gonna um, put this in my Facebook group, which is just search Awesome Art School. I'll put the link uh, on the screen and also in the description box below. So if you want to join the Facebook group and see what everyone else is doing, that would be awesome. So I'm going to do a prompt every Friday for 20 weeks. Your job is to take those prompts, if you want to, or you can disregard this entire video entirely, do whatever you want, that's fine too. But what I would like you guys to do to practice is make five faces off of that prompt. And I want you to think about making something different which with each face that you draw. So maybe you have the same exact face, but you just do five different hairstyles. Or maybe you do the same face and you you switch up the lighting and so the shadows on the face and the shading are going to be different for each one. And um, I know a lot of you guys have trouble with um, shading and shadow and highlights. So what I'm doing is I am going to, uh, if you go into the description box below, I'm going to put in there a free PDF of a shading guide that I put together. It's in my very first book, how to draw fun fab faces. It's actually in the second edition, but it's been out for a couple years now. It's not in the first edition, but I think most of you by now have the second one anyways. But if you don't, that's fine because I'm gonna put it in, in the description box. Um, you can go ahead and grab that shading guide. It's a PDF so you can download it and have that at home for a resource. And that just shows, um, one, two, three, I think it's nine different like shading angles. So if the light source is coming from here, then it's dark over here. And if the light source is coming straight on, then you're gonna get shadows here. So it kind of goes through all those. So that will help hopefully like inspire you to try different shadings in your faces. So if you're posting your, and I'm doing five, I want you to do five. That way there's not pressure to do one every day. You can skip two days and still be following along in the challenge, so it won't be so stressful. If you're posting your work on Facebook or Instagram, if you wanna use the hashtag 100 fun fab faces, because we are going to make 100 fun fab faces, aren't we? We are. So grab the free link if you want that help, and I'm ready to get started. At the end of this video tutorial, I am going to, I have a bunch of fun new news for you, so if you want to um, hear about that, you just watch to the bitter end and it'll be there for you. Otherwise, enjoy the demo and the tutorial today. And last but not least, I know there's a lot of beginners that are doing this challenge, so I'm gonna go step by step real time. Um, for the most part, I'm going to keep these all real time. So I hope that gives you as much like learning possibilities as possible. <laughs> all right, let's start our challenge. This is day one. Let's do it. All right, today I am sketching with this awesome mechanical pencil. Craft Gear 1000. These were recommended to me by Jenny Mano, and she was also the, I, I actually reached out to her about this challenge because she's like an expert at challenge and prompts. And I was like, ah, I can't draw a face every day for 100 days. I have three kids and a lot of laundry every day. <laughs> so she recommended the once a week, which I love. That's what she does in her, in her group. Um, you can check her out at Next Generation Art, which is on Facebook, and she does amazing art prompt activities in her Facebook group. So check her out. Thanks, Jenny. Okay, so let's draw. So first, we're gonna draw an oval. I'm gonna. I, I, I'm just gonna hold my paper like this because it's comfortable, so it's not straight on. And when I'm doing my oval, I'm keeping my. I'm moving my whole arm. Like if you could see me right now, my arm is bent, but I'm I'm actually moving it from my shoulder and not my, like I'm not doing this, like I'm moving my whole shoulder is rocking with me. So that's 
how I make my ovals. I'm trying to get the lighting better here. That's not better. Okay. And then, I don't know, it's always kind of nice to have like a weird wonky neck. Right? It's more exciting than like a lollipop neck. Okay. I'm going to kind of come in on the sides for the temples. That's optional, but you know, it makes them look a little bit more sexy. I don't really know what the word is. Whoop. You see, that's not good, but that's all right. <laughs> Have your eraser handy. Right? Not a big deal. Erasing extraneous lines. Trying to get my chin shape. And if you need to draw a hundred ovals to get started, then draw a hundred ovals to get started and don't even worry about it. Just erase them. Okay. Now I need to get my proportions right. So I'm doing a line across the center like that. And then I'm going to do a line of vertical line down the center like this. Now I'm going to take this line that's cutting my oval in half. I'm going to divide it again. And then I'm going to take this space and I'm going to divide it again. Okay. And I think this whole idea of Jenny saying like, you know, do five variations is actually genius because then it's forcing you to do the same face over and over and almost like perfect it. And then you're just making little changes which will, I don't know, this whole practice is just so, so good. All right, so the eyes, you can do so much, but I like to do mine three across. A realistic face would actually be five across, but I'm not gonna do a realistic face today. I'm also today not using a reference, and I will, that will definitely be changing. But this is our day one, so I'm starting slow. Okay, the nose is gonna go here, so I'm gonna do a little oval there, and then the mouth is here. And this is all in my How to Draw Fun Fab Faces book, in the first one. There's three in the series, but this is number one, and this is all in there step-by-step step for you. All right, so I'm gonna actually start by doing these little, like, canted lines on either side, because that's what our tear duct is gonna come from there. And I'm going to follow this line, the top of my oval. And notice how, oops, notice how squished my ovals are. They're very squished. I think a big mistake people make is they make these way too circular. They're pretty squished. They're pretty squished. I mean, you obviously you can do whatever you want, especially if they're whimsical, but um, that's something I notice a lot. And also the biggest probably eye mistake I see is the eyes being close together. You need a whole eyeball between them. So if you, especially if your eyes are really big, that's definitely the most common mistake. And then there's only like this much space between them, which is not good. You got to put some space in there and there's actually better to have more space. Like if you're going to err on the side of not the right space in the middle, have them farther apart rather than too close together. Okay, so I'm adding these little like hooky things for tear ducts. And then I'm finding the bottom of my line of the oval again. And then I'm just gonna have them join forces. Now I notice that this side I only have that much room and this side I have this much room. So you wanna even those out. So either bring the one in or bring one out. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. But again, these proportions are what make your face look not like a hot mess. Oop. Okay, you try to even them out as best you can. Nobody's face is perfect even in real life, so whatever, close enough. And just so you know, I'm gonna be working in alcohol markers today. So lots of different brands, but I picked up a new set I'm gonna try out. All right, so let's see, our eyes, we want the the eyelids need to cut off that iris. So it doesn't matter if, well, let me back up. You need to draw a whole circle in order to get bang these eyes out right. So they can sit here, they can sit here. The circle can be drawn anywhere, but this has to be, um, your iris, which is the color part of your eye, has to be cut off by either the top or the bottom or both by the eyelid so you can put it wherever you want I'm gonna put mine like pretty dead center I 
don't usually draw the whole circle anymore, but I'm doing this for illustrative purposes so you can see that's a little wonky. Also, like use a use a template. If you can't figure out how to do that, you know, use like grab something that's the right size and trace it. Or you can get a like a circle template, which I have too. But this, when I say chopped off, so you're only seeing this part and both see how the circles cut off at the top and the bottom. Oh, it's just highlighting the wrong part there. And then you erase the extra bits out. Okay, and then all this can come out. There's a lot of different ways to draw noses that are fun, but I'll just do again the kind of easiest. Um, let's see, we'll do two little chubbies on either side. You can darken the nostrils like this, and then you can draw like your little parentheses, I like to call them on either side. And a way to cute, and then you erase the rest of the bits. A cute way, you can also draw like some people draw the, like the circle for the ball of the nose, which is kind of cute, and then you do your shading based on that. And then I'm gonna do this little, the little lines, which lead me right to where the lips are gonna start. And it's roughly in line with where my mouth is, because my guidelines were correct. So I'm gonna pop a V in right here. And boop, make it wide. And then I always draw the bottom of the top lip next. So this kind of shadows that first line. And then the bottom lip, you can make skinny, you can make fat, you can make it like start all the way down here. It can be very thin, or you can make that any width that you want. So you can play around with that. Even if you like keep, do the same face and just change the mouth every time. Just those little tiny changes are what makes your all your faces different from one another, which is so fun. Okay, erasing some of these guidelines. All right, now ears. I'm just not drawing ears because ears are stupid. And then hair, everybody freaks out about hair. Don't freak out about hair, it's fun. You pick the part. I've done a ton of these videos recently, so I have a lot of resources for you. So pick a part on the scalp somewhere. Okay, so I'm gonna put it over here. And the hair has to come in the forehead oval and then also up and over the top of the head. And again, this is all in my book. I may just fuse. So if you want to have bangs, you can like, they need to drop into this circle. Don't be afraid to put them in your circle, guys. Just do it. It's fine. So I'm making some bangs today. Never make bangs. And then again, the hair has volume. So this is going to come out. And you can, and it's going to come out from either part. So it's going up and over. I'm just, I'm feeling these like spikes today. I don't know why. Just am. No reason. Okay, so a hair comes up and over and up and over and maybe there's some that comes in here like this. Literally do whatever you want. So again, in your five prompts, maybe you just change the hair every single time. Give you good hair practice. I'm gonna erase her oval for the top of her head. And maybe there's like a, like a wisp that comes out here. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just making this up as I go. Doesn't matter. All right, and then we need to get back to our eyes and kind of finish those off. I'm trying to think this looks a little bare. So the pupils can be tiny or large. It feels kind of big today. And again, ideally, it looks a little bit better if the pupils also get cut off, but 
doesn't really matter. And then you need an eyelid, which I'm gonna have her as pretty small eyelids today. So they come up from the tear ducts. I have all angular lines today. I don't always work like this, but again, when you do all these face practices, it's such good practice because you can change up, like maybe tomorrow I'll have a soft, you know, all my lines will be swishy and soft. And so every time you change it, it just alters so much of the expression. The eyebrows start at the, the same place that the tear ducts do. So maybe she's like, and I'm gonna use my Copics again. So I'm kind of making these fat because I'm gonna color them in. Okay. Get rid of some of these guidelines that are still hanging out. All right, and now I'm ready to use my Copics to, to um, color her in. First thing I'm gonna do is take a regular Sharpie and outline her. Okay, and you can use a regular Sharpie or you can use a thin one. I usually like to do the hair like in around the face in a darker one. And then I do like the features within it in a fine one. I'm not sure that I care so much. Okay, and then I'm switching. And actually what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna continue these up. And I'll show you why when I go to color these in. faces. So fun. So, 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 so fun. Okay, and our eyebrows. Get thinner Sharpie. So the pupils, you can go back with a white marker to add the little eye shine, or when you're doing, or when you're drawing her, you can leave like part of the pupil open. So you make sure to have some eye shine in there at some point. 
But again, you can always go back and add it. And then I'll do my eyelashes at the very, very end. I'm going to erase all my extraneous lines. I don't like is like her head up there looks really weird but it is what it is too late now <laughs> too late now all right I'm using these I'm super intrigued I got these at Barnes and Noble um, but you know what intrigued me was that the fact that it says archival because most alcohol based markers Copics included are not light fast and archival, you know, by definition means that they're not going to fade for like 70 years. So I thought that was a good investment. I usually shy away from my Copics when I'm doing something, you know, on a project that I ugh, am very like worried about lasting. I won't use them. And I actually write that in my mixed media magic book too on my chapter on kind of supplies. It's like, I love Copics, but I don't tend to use them because of the, I mean, for permanent projects because they fade. Um, but these don't. So, all right. So these are my skin tone. This is the skin tone pack and it looks like a good array. I should totally color swatch these like super duper duper fast. Let me get another piece of paper. All right. And these are dual tipped as well this is powder well that's pretty this is what is this oof skin white just write this powder skin white apricot What is this? What the heck? Mocha. I just had like a super brain fart. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? And two more. These are good colors. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of obsessed with alcohol markers. I have a giant stash. As much as I say I shy away from them, I hoard them also. Coca. Coco. Coco. I don't know. Oh, this is awesome. And ebony. All right, sweet. Um, I think I'm going to do like a mid-range. I think I'm going to do these apricot and mocha. So you should always pick at least two, if not three. I could also, th if I want to get really dramatic, I can do three. When you're shading, you always need to have it. At least, at least, at least two. Um, apricot, where are you? So I'm going to do one pass over her whole face. Now, alcohol markers, you have to move quickly or you get really permanent streaks. So, but if you move fast, I have actually a whole video on like tips for coloring with alcohol markers. I will link to it in the card to kind of move quickly, really quickly so that you don't get those streaks. Hey, little facey. And my faces are usually pretty big, so it's harder to draw, to do fast when your face areas are so large. But do your best. And every time you have a like a second coat, it, it gets darker there. So it's all right. Just move as quickly as you can and hopefully you won't get you can also if it's a smaller drawing you can do little circular motions instead which tends to work a little bit better now it's also good I should mention to try to avoid the sharpie it will now sharpies are alcohol-based markers also I don't know if you knew that or not but 
you don't want to you don't want to go over them so much. I know people have cried out to me like, help, my Sharpie bled into my face. And yeah, you don't want to like draw over your Sharpie lines. You do want to avoid them because they will pull into your drawing a little bit or bleed. So try to just go around them. Leaving a little white. And then, so this these, this whole challenge series is going to be really good for everybody. It's good for me because I've been so busy with my business, but I need practice too. That, that never goes away. Everybody needs to practice to hone their skill, but also to keep them fresh, right? So this is really good. This is great practice for all of us. All right, so now we're ready for our second coat of shading and some of these wet parts will start going away. So you can start really slow. If you're scared to add a lot of shading, just use the same color that you just did over again. Or if you're not scared, then come with me. All right, we're gonna kick this up a notch. So we gotta get shading into wherever there's gonna be shadow. So there's always shadow, like wherever there's hair falling across her face. You're gonna have a little shadow line there. So that's the first thing we can do. Okay, boop, 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 boop. So we're gonna do that. And then there's also usually shading around here. And there's always shading on the neck because the chin sticks out and then it's gonna cast a shadow on this neck. So, you can like highlight your shadow areas first. Okay. And then the nose is not made up of lines. It's actually made up of shade and shadow. So I'm gonna start, whoops. And she looks really like somebody punched her in the face because she has no nose bridge because we haven't added any sh shading yet. So I'm gonna, under the nose is always shaded. As well as in that little lippy dippy. So I always start with the eyes. Okay, so the nose bridge is made up of our shadow. And then it continues around the eye. If they have big, if she has cheekbones, it'll come in too. And then I'm leaving a little highlight right here. So it's like shadow, shadow, and then that little triangle can stay where it is. And this is probably all in shadow because this is a pretty big lock of hair. Okay, so even if we do one side, I mean, you can start getting a picture of who she is. This side is also shaded. And I like to do the shading where it's more pronounced on one side than the other, because it just looks more dramatic. This is going to be shaded too. So you could do just like this. And then usually under the chin, lips, there's a little bit of a lip. A lip dip. All right, and you could stop and not do any more than that. If you wanted to ease into some more shading, you have so many options. You could take the original color and like if you wanted to blend this out because it was too, the contrast was too great, you could do that. So repeating. So if you notice, I'm putting it as like at the segue between the first and second color to blend them together more, and that's less drama. If you wanted more drama, you could draw, you could pick the next color down on your value scale and go and do one more pass. I'm short on time today, so I'm gonna go grab some 
colors and fill in her hair. All right, so I'm about to start coloring her hair. Just gonna add like another wisp down there. This is super bothering me up here. But again, it doesn't really matter. This is just for fun. Hmm. I could do this all day. Just chop her head up into different segments. All right, so I have like some greens and blues because I'm just feeling extra creative today. So, here goes nothing. So the mouth, I'm just doing like, this is bluish pink by Prismacolor. And we can make a little line for her tear ducts. And she really needs some eyelashes. I feel like her hair needs some more doodles too. What do you think? Oh, yes. detail you can do the eyes to put a little shadow how dark is this oh that's too dark with a little gray you can put a little shadow at the top there That is enough of a prompt to get you started. You can always go back with a white marker and like doodle some more. You could you could have a complete and utter heyday. And you get like again, you can also <clears throat> add drama to this by adding another coat of a darker skin color. Get our lips a little bit more. Dimension. All right, so there you go. Week one, we have our Copic Green Mistress. That's what I'm gonna call her, my Copic Green Mistress. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you got a lot out of it. And yeah, I can't wait to see your prompts. Hashtag 100 Fun Fat Faces. And um, I'm really looking forward to continuing this face drawing journey with you. And don't forget to pop in the Facebook group and show me uh, what you got. I cannot wait to see. Bye guys, thanks for playing. Okay, for those of you who followed along, thank you so much for staying with me. I hope you had a fun time and that you learned a lot and that you're excited for your prompts. Again, um, for your five, for your five exercises, you know, I encourage you to change, make small changes on each one and that will help 
to solidify the things that you're learning and to grow and to get better as an artist every single day while hopefully having a really fun time. All right, here's my exciting news that I promised that I would have. First of all, I'm very excited about this. I'm have, I have merch coming and I've uh, teamed up with Teespring and YouTube and so I have put some of my art graphics on some clothing and pillows and posters and whatnot and so you're gonna have a banner. It's gonna show up in the next couple of days. Cross your fingers. So you can go ahead and like pick out or go shopping. I don't know if you want to. So I'm very excited about that. Um, also, I will in the next couple of weeks, um, I'm going to be introducing you to my team of people who I work with. Now I know it looks like um, I kind of just do this for fun and on the side and I'm a mom and I do all this stuff, but actually I'm running a pretty pretty serious business over at Awesome Art School and I'm not really the solo uh, worker over there and I think it's time that I kind of introduce you to some of my behind the scenes happenings including the lovely women that I work with. So you can look forward to that in the next couple weeks coming up. Um, 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 oh, I also added a new class at Awesome Art School which is called my Mixed Media Masterclass. And it's actually a class bundle. It's um, mixed media magic when there's 12 projects in there, like real time, complete tutorials based off my mixed magic, mixed media magic book. And it's also bundled with my mixing the media beginners mixed media course. So like between and that has a lot of art journaling and upcycling um, and awesome projects in there as well. So when you put the two together, you're talking over 20, over 20 projects. I think it comes down to be like $6 a project. It's crazy fun bundle. And right now, if you hop on Awesome Art School, there should be, and let me know if there's not, a pop-up for a 30% off coupon, any class. So just saying, if you wanted to put the two together, I just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, and um, also for my mixed media magic students who are already enrolled in that, um, I have two brand new tutorials that are in that classroom for you. One is I do, um, I do how to do mixed media eyes and that will be coming as a free class also. That's very, very shortly coming up will be available to everyone. It's just already done in that classroom. And then I also have this little llama that you can see over here. This guy is also already available for people who have already signed up for my mixed media course. And that's this guy right here, oh he's so cute. And he's gonna be on some merch too because oh he's so cute, I can't resist. So that is already in your classroom. If you're a student of Mixed Media Magic already, you can go in there and start your tutorial again anytime. And that one it will also be available for free soon. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. There's lots of exciting things coming up at Awesome Art School. So um, thanks for being here. Again, I hope you liked the tutorial, learned lots. And don't forget to pick up your free shading guide in the description box. And I will see you on Monday for Mixed Media Monday. Yay!